understand that she's a bird. So it is it is a different process for these guys. Okay. Ah, uh, let's go butcher. Um have you how often do you get injuries? What injuries do you get? How often do we what? Do you get injuries? The birds? Yeah, like how like uh no you. Me? Yeah. And <laughs> people in general. Oh, well the yeah. bird can they they have uh What's that? Is it dangerous? Are they dangerous? That's pretty close to one of the questions. <laughs> I'll give it to we'll give you that one, though. Usually the question is, when I'm holding the bird on the fist, they're like, aren't you afraid you're going to get bit? Aren't you afraid you're going to get bit? Anna, is that bird going to bite you? Uh, yes. Yes? <laughs> More dangerous than these guys are the feet. The feet, they have a lot of power. I don't know, if you came up here with some good light, you probably see I do have some scars in all of my arms, because, yeah, you do get grabbed. If you're going to play with birds that have pointy beaks and feet, yeah, you're going to get hunched up once in a while. But if you're careful, we try to build up trust with these animals. If you're careful and you respect their boundaries, then you probably won't have that. I'm going to get injured more often by falling in the field. <laughs> Frankly, I'm going to fall because I'm like, Kind of clumsy sometimes. So, um, where do you trap these birds? Where do we trap these birds? You know, I owe you a piece of chocolate. Are you picky? Uh, M and M's. <laughs> where do we trap them? Uh, the Harris hawk, which I'll bring out in a little bit, I went down to Texas for because you got to go where they're at. This bird was trapped just outside of Austin. <laughs> This bird was trapped in Rochester last winter. This bird we took out of the nest box in a nest box just over the river just south of Winona. So their red tails are everywhere. They're everywhere. They are what we call ubiquitous. They're everywhere. Red shirt way back. Can, can they see like uh, eagles can, you know, from the fire? They, they have excellent vision, yes. Uh, the main thing that's going on in their head is eyeballs. That's why this one here, she's got a hood on, and essentially that's the off button. So you put a hood on them, it sort of shuts them down. That's why this one's sitting calmly, not doing anything. This one's getting a little bit, little bit uncomfortable. You want to go ahead and put her in here. So she's going to put her back in the box. I can put her hood in there if you want. If you just put her back in the box, and she'll go in. So yes, they have excellent vision. They can see. Very far off, since what they're looking for is going to be like mice, rabbits. Yeah, so they can see very well. What's the most common, like, do you, no, like, do you guys, like, ever catch, like, a bird you're not trying to catch? Yes, sometimes we will catch things that are out of season. So, I don't think Minnesota has a let it lay law. Do they have a let it lay law? No, I think they do. Pretty much with mine, I'm going after rabbits and squirrels. But no, I mean, like birds. Like, do you ever catch like birds? Or, like, I can't with mine. Oh, yeah, like you're trying to like get a bird, like, and there's like multiple around you. Like, oh, if you got the wrong one, then we just let it go. Yeah, if, it, if we caught the wrong species, we would let it go. Or if we yeah. caught an adult. Yeah, if we caught an adult, we just let it go. Yeah, and we have to be right there at the trap, so we don't we don't like set it and then run away. We're right there, so. Uh, yes. Um, what are some of the laws that you have to follow as a problem? All right. Uh, there is a whole set of laws that are published. You can look for them on the internet. <laughs> um, it, they, they govern uh, the different levels of uh, apprenticeship and then what kind of birds we can have. Uh, we have to follow the same game laws as everybody else. So we can only hunt small game during small game season. And I have to get a small game permit. Um, we are required to have facilities appropriate for these birds, and a game warden can come to our house at any time and come and inspect. Because these are considered protected birds. They are migratory, they're protected by federal law, they're protected by treaty, uh, international treaty, they're protected by state law. So yeah, they're, they're protected birds, so we have to meet certain requirements to keep their housing and all appropriate. Sometimes animals. Might get called in. Some people call animal control. Yeah. So she she lives in town. 
Yeah. I live in the country, so most likely there's no city or town that's going to come out to see me. But I've had them call before. Yeah. Um, they just check out. Do you really have a lock at your house? Yeah. Yeah, we have a permit. Yeah, but you got a permit for it. So. Yeah. In that here. So what is the long-term purpose of catching training? It is a sport. It is a sport that has been practiced since the dawn of time, pretty much. So they would learn Thousands of years. What's that? So they would learn to hunt on their own if you weren't Okay, that's kind of close to the ding, ding, ding. I, I, yeah, I get that's them. pretty close to one of the questions. Shall I throw some candy back to you? All right. A lot of times people will ask, so did you teach this bird how to hunt? No. It's... Uh -oh. I don't know. Yeah. Um, hunting is instinctual. They just do it automatically. What we're training them is for them to follow it up. We're training them. We give them the opportunity to hunt. Anybody here? Have y'all ever noticed if you're out like making hay or doing the crop? Do you ever notice though that your local hawks come and sit on the edges and they're going to come down and catch the mice that you're kicking up with your farm equipment? That's almost falconry right there. Your local hawks are very opportunistic. You're creating an environment that's providing food for them, so they're going to come and be there to take advantage of that situation. That's what we do with them. We take them from the wild. We put a little training on them to get them used to us, to get them used to us, and then we take them out and give them hunting opportunities. And then they're just like, oh, you're going to help me hunt? Okay, let's go. <laughs> and they're fine with that. They're fine with that. Blue shirt. Uh, uh, did I ask you two questions or is that too much? I don't know. <laughs> go ahead. So, is it really disorienting for them to look at us? Because I went to the Eagle Center. I've never been to it. They have a, they have a magnifying scope that looks at like a mouse, like mm -hmm. that they hang on the ceiling that you don't even notice until you look through the. I think I'll let her answer this question. You mentioned about the whole eye phobia. Yeah, birds have very different eyes than people do. Uh, birds have evolved very, very long time, millions of years before mammals did. So their eye shape is different. They don't have a round eye. It's actually usually oval shaped or sometimes very different shapes. So the way that birds focus is different, the way that they see is different. Uh, it's not necessarily disorienting for them to look at us, but it depends on the uh, distance that they're at. So they can, they, like, this bird looking at you can see you very well. But this bird looking at my face right here, when we see it, it would be very blurry. So things that are extremely close, they can't see. And another interesting thing about these guys is a bird like a kestrel can see UV light. So it can see light that we can't see. And this bird is covered in markings that we can't see, but other birds can. And they use that because mouse urine or rodent urine will shine under UV light, urine in general. So they can actually follow trails, fresh trails of uh, urine from mice on the ground. So they see things that are invisible to us. And you'll, you'll see these birds when they're hunting, they'll be hovering. What they're doing is they're looking, using that UV ability, and they're like watching, and they're like, okay, I see a little mouse trail going on here, and I'm going to keep following it until, oh, there's a mouse. And they go and get it. And, all right. The other question was, uh, what do you mean, like, I didn't, uh, you said that they have been doing this for, since the dawn of time. Who, who started it? Who started it? Um, is it? China? The absolute earliest records we have that are definitive proof is Egypt. Egypt. But there are cave paintings showing people holding raptors that are thousands of years older than that, like tens of thousands of years older. They think it possibly started in ancient in ancient China, Asia area, or Siberia, but it's it's hard to prove that it's 
it's not just a whimsical painting that it was actually falconry, but Egypt we know for sure. Did it get brought over here, or did it like Native Americans? Or? There is no sign or history that Native Americans practiced falconry. Uh, they did have other interactions with the birds of prey, but not actively hunting with them. Though it is oral history, so it's possible it was here, but it was definitely not ubiquitous. It was brought over with European settlers who practiced it for thousands of years. Yeah. Now there, that, that brings up a chance for me to also talk about some of the different kinds of birds that are used in falconry. Now the term falconry, of course, is using falcon, which pretty much has been the main bird that's been used throughout history. Uh, the only falcon we have here is this little itty tiny. This is a this is a falcon, but a very small one. I don't have though a peregrine. I don't. I just don't have one. The kind of fun thing about that too, and the name is that in medieval Europe, where falcons were used, a bird like this could be hunted by a commoner. But to have a peregrine falcon or a deer falcon, other falcons, you had to be royalty, and that was punishable by death. So this is a commoner's bird. Commoner's bird. <laughs> but the types of birds are often. Not anymore, not, not today, anymore. but in history, the type of bird that was dependent on your class. Here in America, this is the most excellent bird, the red-tailed hawk. And then I have a Harris hawk I'll bring out in just a little bit. That's also a very good one. There's another category of hawks. We call them the forest hawks. Anybody here know what acipiters are? Anybody? Acipiters? You think you know maybe? What are acipiters? I recognize the word. You recognize so the word. Yeah. Those are the true forest hawks, and there's three of them. The biggest one is the goss hawk. The one in the middle is the sharp shin. No, sharpie's in the middle, at the bottom. The one in the middle then is the coopers. Those are your true forest hawks. Short wings, long tails, bird hunters, very fast. I don't have one of those either because they're kind of crazy. They're kind of crazy birds. <laughs> <laughs> 